guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you don't know who I am, my name is Jessica Likewise, and I'm the CEO of Hope Education Services. I'm passionate about helping people pass their BCBA exam because I know how challenging it is to navigate life and studying and how important it is to help you do what you love in helping kids with autism. So I'm here with Dr. Catherine May, and together we're going to help you pass your exam. We're going to be dissecting some questions for you. We're going to be giving you some tips and strategies. Today, we're going to talk about a question that I get all the time, and that's what's the difference between behavior contrast and matching law. So stay tuned, and we're going to help you figure it out. Well, hey, guys, and welcome back. Um, Dr. Catherine, thanks for being on here today. You know, a question I get all the time is really what's the difference between matching law and behavior contrast? And I think that once you understand that they're different and they're running under different schedules of reinforcement, that you can know what the distinction is. But I know um, together, let's just help people kind of walk through them. You know, what's the difference? And in your, in your experience, you know, what's the best way to understand the difference between these two things? So absolutely. So... Your behavior contrast and your matching law, although they seem similar, they are actually very quite different. So when you're thinking of your behavior contrast, I want you to think you have one behavior and there's a change in the response rate in different contexts. And what do I mean by that? Here's an example. Let's say mom and dad, let's say they're divorced, so they live in two different homes, right? And mom has little Johnny on a reinforcement schedule and his behavior begins to increase when he's at mom's house. But when Little Johnny's at dad's house, dad does not have him on a reinforcement schedule. So what happens to that same behavior? It starts to decrease. So what you see is almost like a seesaw effect when it's behavior contrast, right? Your behavior is increasing on one context and context, and then you're thinking the seesaw. If you sit on a seesaw, one side goes up and the other side goes down. So you'll see the behavior decrease in the other context. Whereas with matching law, right, you want to think behavior goes where reinforcement flows. So essentially you have these two um, schedules of reinforcement, okay? But the one schedule that is the stronger reinforcement is going to foster that behavior. So the behavior is going to essentially go where reinforcement flows, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the thing I want people to remember too, and you brought this up, is that when you're looking at a, you know, behavior contrast, right, that occurs when there's one behavior that's being that is on a multiple schedules of reinforcement. So one behavior is being reinforced differently in different places, you know, and where you're looking at the, um, excuse me, the matching law, you have two concurrent schedules of reinforcement, meaning the child is going to choose, you know, more than one activity. So for the matching law, there's more than one behavior. And there's in there's still two schedules of reinforcement or more, but there's more than one behavior, whereas behavior contrast, there's only going to be that one behavior. Um, Absolutely. And I feel like one of my favorite examples that I always like to teach with is um, when I'm talking about the matching law, you know, I say, well, little Susie can sit with me in the lunchroom for a half hour of her favorite movie, or she can socialize with her peers, which is the target response that we want her to engage in. Now, if she socializes with her peers, she can get an hour of that favorite movie, right? So because that hour is a stronger reinforcer, she's going to actually sit with her peers rather than sit with me. So she's going to sit and socialize with her peers because the hour of the, her favorite movie is stronger and more reinforcing than just a half hour, which would be sitting with me. So if you're, you're looking at exactly what you just said, you do have the two different behaviors. One is sitting and socializing with peers while the other one was sitting with their teacher, let's just say. So you have the two schedules of reinforcement and the stronger reinforcement is where the, the schedule for those behaviors, where the client's going to engage in those behaviors. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I had a client that even just today had said to me, well, you know, and, and in this particular situation, mom, dad is like really into the child's ABA program and he will carry out anything that we ask him to do. Whereas mom is not going to carry it out. She's like made it clear that she's not interested. And right, that's fine. I'm not judging either parent. That's just the way the situation is. And dad had asked me, well, you know, he's having a really hard time in school. So why don't we create a token system and I will implement it perfectly. But the problem is the parents have split custody. And I said to the dad, well, here's the problem. If I do that, it may make the behavior worse at school and at mom's house. I said 100% the behavior is going to improve with you, right? But in contrast, right, behavior contrast, in contrast, 
it's probably going to make it worse in school. So if not, if this teacher and the parent and mom can't carry out the behavior plan the same way, well, that's going to cause a problem, right? And I, and I really wanted to bring that example up because I think that when thinking about behavior contrast, sometimes we feel like, you know, when we're going through these Cooper books and, you know, mine is sitting right here and there's like literally pages falling out. It's so very old. Um, <laughs> and yeah, exactly. It's right there. We feel like, well, you know what? I just need to memorize these terms, you know, and I never want to use, I never am going to ever use it again. You know, and a lot of times that's how we feel. Is it, and I know I felt that way when I started sitting for my exam, I just thought, well, I'm just gonna memorize these terms. And honestly, I'm like, this is stupid. Why do I need to do this? Why do I have to go through this textbook after a, almost threw it in the computer over, right? <laughs> after a long day of work, I have to literally sit here and I'm gonna read terms that I'm never gonna use or see. But it's actually not true that we don't ever use and see them. If we don't understand these concepts, then we may make mistakes as a BCBA, right? Because when this father had said to me, hey, listen, he's struggling in school and I want to do this at home, but I know for a fact mom and the teachers aren't going to do it. I might have been, if I didn't understand the concept of behavior contrast, I might have just said like, yes, go dad. We're going to make a <laughs> we're going to make a token economy. I'm going to make the best token economy in the entire world. As a matter of fact, I'm even going to let him choose the reinforcer and then throw matching lot into there. Yeah. I'm like, okay. you know, I'm going to let the kid choose. Um, I'm going to let the kid choose a, uh, what he wants to do. I'm gonna let him either pick, he can either earn tokens by, you know, reading for five minutes or he can read to he can earn tokens by playing his iPad for an hour. Guess which one he would be picking if that was the matching law, right? You got I'm it. Be doing that. But because I understand these concepts, and that's why we want you to do this, because you are gonna be using those in real life. And this is really funny. In this conversation I had with this parent today, I used both behavior contrast and matching law. I didn't say to the father, right? I can't do this because of behavior contrast and one behavior might increase when there's a different response in a different environment. I just said to dad, listen, here's the problem. If not everyone's on board, I fear that what's going to happen is it's going to get worse and school and it's going to get worse with mom. Right. And that's why you need to understand these terms. And the same thing when you're making a token economy and the child can have multiple um, behaviors with multiple different rewards. Guess what that is? Matching law. Right. It really just says, like, and you really, when you're watching television versus doing the dishes versus studying for your exam, the fact that you're watching this video right now, that's matching law, right? It means that like right now, it's more important to you to pass your BCBA exam than to know what the Kardashians are doing. Maybe in a month from now, once you pass your exam, then the Kardashians will be more interesting than us. I hope not, but it's probably what's gonna happen, right? Or you might be scrolling Instagram. Maybe that's what's gonna be um, more, more reinforcing to you in a month from now. So that's really what it comes down to is knowing and understanding that this is not just about the textbooks. You know, I know, Catherine, don't you use these concepts every day? I know I do. Every day, truly. Yeah. And if you don't understand them, you may be making poor decisions. So I really has hoped this video has not only helped you to really understand this so you know you can get your questions right and be a BCBA, but that you're a better BCBA and you make better decisions for your clients once you do understand these terms and once you do pass your exam and you are all gonna pass your exam, we're gonna make sure of it. And we do have a way to help you make sure of that. So we partnered together to put a course, it is based on task list five because task list five is right around the corner. So if you want to learn more about that, you can actually check out tasklist5.com where we're gonna be sharing about what we have planned for you. It's actually crazy. We're basically giving away um, free group coaching. I don't even know why, like we just, I just like when it's just a gathering, I'm like, let's just give away free coaching. And she's like, okay, well, what are we gonna charge for it? I'm like, it's like 50 cents an hour. So yeah, so if you wanna hear about how you can get coaching with us for 50 cents an hour, literally, just check out um, tasklist5.com and all the details will be on there because it is really going to be crazy. Like we have that special offer for you. So we want to help you study. We know how important it is. We want you to be able to be a BCBA, help kids. Um, and, you know, we're going to make sure we're part of that journey for you. So if you liked this video, drop a comment below. If you have a question, drop a comment on this video below. We'll help get your questions answered. And like I said, check out tasklist5.com. We really look forward to working with you guys. And thanks, uh, Catherine, for being here. Thanks for having me.